Welcome to the Weather Farm. I'm meteorologist Christopher Hale, and the big story this week is the heat wave that has gripped most of the United States with temperatures 5 to 10 degrees above seasonal norm. Its days are numbered. As we look up across parts of Alberta and Saskatchewan, that cooler Canadian air is going to be sent south across the eastern half of the United States in the coming week. And this is going to mean as much as 10 to 20 degree temperature drop in our daytime highs. It's going to be a huge change for what we've been dealing with lately. So let's walk through what's driving this change, the timing, and how long this cooler weather will stick around before summer tries to make a comeback. And so what we see here is our five is our 500 millibar jet stream. So that jet stream is making a ridge across the central plains. That's going to spread exceptionally warm air across the eastern half of the United States. Mid 90s are going to be very common. And we're going to watch up to the north. We're going to start to see that trough developing early next week. That ridge is going to set up and actually it's going to retrograde back towards the west. And we start to get that northwesterly flow across the Canadian provinces, bringing that cooler air down into the lower 48. And so as we look at our temperature anomaly map, by the time we get to Thursday and Friday of next week, we're going to see that cooler temperature for most of the eastern half of the United States. Where we've been running 10 degrees above normal, we're going to be running 5 to 10 degrees below our seasonal norms as we close out next weekend. But out west, we're going to see that heat starting to build, where we will expect to see temperatures 5, 10, 15 degrees above your seasonal norm. But again, it's not going to last very long. But in the meantime, we still have that heat. We have 90s and triple digits all across the central plains up into the South Dakota. We have 80s across the east up into the northeast. There's a little cool air associated with some cloud cover and storms that are making their way into Wisconsin for our Thursday, keeping temperatures there down in the 70s. 90s across Florida and out in the deserts, we're in the 100s to 1 teens. And that hot temperatures are going to just continue as we go into our Friday with much of the same. We are warming up across the northern plains. Minneapolis, you could be in the low to mid 80s for your Friday. As we go into our Saturday, we see temperatures approaching 105 for parts of Nebraska. But look to the north. There's the signs of that cooler air beginning to filter down. We see high temperatures here in the 50s and 60s. Out across parts of Texas, we're cooling down as well. We're in the mid-90s, but it's the upper 90s to near 100 for most of the southern Gulf states down through Florida for our Saturday. And we do believe that Sunday will be the warmest day. We have triple digits extending well into the eastern half of the United States. Through the Ohio Valley, you're in the mid-90s. We start to see those cooler temperatures, at least the initial shot, with temperatures in the 70s across northern Wisconsin, but across far parts of British Columbia into Alberta. 40s and 50s in those highest elevations. Even out across the desert southwest, we're cooling off into those triple digits. But by the time we get to Tuesday, you can almost see that ridge that was centered across the central plains over the weekend and the eastern half of the United States. You can kind of see it building back across the west as we have 90s reaching well up into the Canadian provinces. And that's going to allow that cooler air to start to filter down as we continue to push this heat off to the west. And we really see that come into play on our Wednesday. We have 70s and 80s through the Great Lakes into the northeast. The 90s are really kept towards the south. Triple digits are pushed out west. And the deserts are warming back up. And we're surging those 90s well up into southern parts of Alberta. And that pattern is not going to last long across the United States. Because by the time we get to Thursday, around the 28th of August, we see a return of a trough in the Pacific Northwest. And it pushes that ridge back to the east. So just as we approach that Labor Day holiday, we could be looking at exceptional warmth across the eastern two-thirds of the United States for that last gasp of our summer weather. But as we see yet more troughs continuing to make their way further south through the Canadian provinces, just a sign of what is to come as we get deeper and deeper into the, the calendar year. But let's jump back to our Thursday. We are going to have a marginal risk of severe weather for most of the eastern half of the United States. We do have a slight risk across parts of South Dakota into Nebraska, and a marginal risk that extends most to the Intermountain West, even down across parts of the Southwest in Arizona and New Mexico, you have a marginal risk of severe weather. But the real threat of any kind of tornadic activity is going to be centered across north central Nebraska and southern South Dakota. And this is also where we see the greatest chance of hail forming for our Thursday. We do have a slightly elevated risk of strong winds. So wind gusts, we could see 60 to 70 mile per hour wind gusts across this area as we go through our day on Thursday. And as we get to our Friday, the beginning of our next weekend, it's that same area that we are watching for the potential of severe weather stretching from South Dakota into southwestern Minnesota into far northwestern Iowa. The, the marginal risk does get pushed a little bit south as that cold front that's bringing refreshing air to parts of the Ohio Valley. So let's take a look at the severe weather across the northern plains for our Thursday. And as we get to Thursday afternoon, we're watching a few storms across North Dakota, but we're really going to focus on these individual discrete cells that are forming across parts of Wyoming, Nebraska, into South Dakota. We're going to watch for one of these, one or two of these to develop into maybe a strong storm Thursday night into Friday. And then Friday afternoon, that's going to shift up towards the north and west as we see storms firing across the Dakotas 
through Minnesota. While these storms may have a lot of instability to work with in the levels of the atmosphere, there is going to be a cap on the environment, and that's going to prevent these storms from really getting going to really get a severe weather event going across the northern plain. However, if that cap does break, we could be full on for some severe weather Friday into the upcoming weekend. So we're going to continue to watch this over the next 24 to 48 hours, and we will bring you the latest in our next forecast. And after we get through this weekend, we're going to watch, again, continued storms across the northern plains for our Sunday. As we go into the next week, that's going to continue to be the, the story across parts of Wisconsin into Michigan and the Upper Peninsula. But as we start to build that ridge out to the west, the heat rises, we start to get a northwesterly flow, and you kind of see it here with these pressure lines. We're going to shift that storm track down into the lower uh, Great Lakes Valley by the time we get to our Tuesday, and it's going to shift down into the Ohio Valley by the time we get to our Wednesday. So we're going to definitely see a more active stormier track as those storms are going to come out of the northwest and travel to the southeast. And just like we've seen time and time again over the summer, when that setup occurs, we get a very active pattern. So as we watch here, we're going to watch what's going to become Hurricane Aaron. But we're going to have that northwesterly flow across the eastern half of the United States. And what that's going to do is as that trough continues to dig towards the east coast, it's going to pick up Aaron and it's going to send it off into the Atlantic Ocean and steer it away from the United States. So we, at this point, we don't expect much in the way of significant impacts from Hurricane Aaron. But let's jump down to the latest on the tropics. As of the time of the recording of this video, around 11 p.m. on our Wednesday night, Aaron was a tropical storm with winds of about 50 miles per hour. It has made significant progress. It is moving to the west at about 17 miles an hour. Here are the, the greater and lesser Antilles Islands, and we're going to continue on that westerly track for the next 36 to 48 hours before it makes a slight turn to the west-northwest. We are also watching another area of disturbance across the Yucatan Peninsula. The National Hurricane Center has gone ahead and highlighted this area off the coast of Mexico for a 10% chance of development over the next seven days. We're going to watch this because this is a similar pattern and setup that we saw with the tropics back in June when we had a disturbance develop across the Yucatan, move into the Gulf, it eventually moved up into Texas. Now, we're not forecasting any kind of flooding rain like we saw back in June, but if it does follow the similar path and develop in a similar way, we could see heavy amounts of rain making their way into southern Texas by the time we get into our weekend. So that's something we're also definitely going to be watching here. But let's take a look at air, and here it is as it makes its journey across the ocean, and it kind of falls apart during the day on our Wednesday. But as we've gotten to Wednesday night, it's kind of getting a, a core with its eye, becoming a very concentrated uh, core of convective storms near its center. It doesn't look very impressive right now, and the reason it kind of broke apart as it moved off the African coast is as I talked about in our last video, we have a lot of cool waters here, and so it really wasn't able to maintain that warm core characteristic that we see in those tropical storms. But as it continues its westward journey, it's going to enter some waters that are much warmer and much more favorable for that intensification. The main problem that we are going to be watching is we are getting an area of high pressure that's developing here in the Caribbean. And so what's going to happen if we think, remember, high pressure has that clockwise rotation around it. So as Aaron moves towards that, it's going to get a little bit of wind shear off from the west. That's going to help rip some of those higher thunderstorms off the top of the the hurricane, and it's going to limit the, how quickly that storm can intensify. We do expect it to become a major hurricane uh, as it makes its westward journey. In fact, the National Hurricane Center, in its last advisory, expects it to transition to a hurricane within the next 24 to 36 hours, reaching major hurricane strength by the time we get to Saturday evening, and it's going to continue that west-northwest pattern. And then it's going to get picked up, as I mentioned, by the time we get to early next week, it's going to start that turn to the north, and then it's going to get pulled out to sea. So it's really going to bring high surf and seas to parts of Puerto Rico, to the Dominican Republic and Haiti, as well as the Bahamas. And it's also going to be impacting Bermuda later in the week. How close it veers back towards, towards Bermuda, that's still to be determined. It's a long way off, and there's a lot of things that can change. And we're going to continue to watch this as this storm develops. Because right now, when we look at the different model trends, we're seeing a good consensus in the model data out to about 72 hours. And this puts it just north of Puerto Rico. But after we get to 72 hours, some models want to continue it more on a west-northwesterly journey. Some want to make that turn just a little bit sharper to the north. And most of the models do have it by about 120 hours, making a turn towards the north. Again, here is Bermuda. Uh, we have the Bahamas. And we have the Dominican Republic. So we expect it to make that turn, stay uh, west of Bermuda, but obviously bring impacts to, with high waves and high seas in that area. And here's another look at potential. Uh, this is the GEFS model. So again, it maintains it. It deepens it to about a 974 millibar low about five days from now. And about a week from now, next Thursday, we could have a 961 millibar low. 
But by, again, by the time we get to next Thursday, that's when that trough is going to be digging into the eastern half of the United States. And that's why we see all of these models showing that that hurricane is going to get picked up by that trough as it continues to deepen, but it's going to pull it quickly out to sea and away from the United States. And we can kind of see that here on our 500 millibar anomaly map. Here's Hurricane Aaron. Here's that ridge that has crossed the central parts of the United States. It's going to build to the west as that heat dome expands out west. And here comes that trough digging across the eastern half of the United States. And by about the time we get to Wednesday night into Thursday, that trough has made its way offshore and it's going to pick up Aaron and it's going to steer it back out sea and away from land. We thank you for joining us here at the Weather Farm, but here's the bottom line. Cooler weather is coming for most of the country, but not before we have a few active days of severe storms. The tropics are heating up fast, so if you're along the Gulf or the East Coast, keep checking in daily. We'll have updates on any severe weather or updates with Hurricane Aaron as we get to our Friday video. Make sure you're subscribed, that you have those alerts turned on so you don't miss any of those updates. We hope you have a wonderful Thursday, and we will see you again soon here at the Weather Farm.